welcome to episode 24 of the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. I'm Eugene B. Sims, and welcome once again to another episode of the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. I do appreciate you tuning in, taking a listen, and I'm starting up the Patreon again on May 15th. So that's a week from today. You know, I'm recording on Thursday, but I would like to release it on Friday. So this is the 8th. So the 15th is when, uh, if you want those bonus episodes every Friday, you got to pony up four bucks or more, you know. Nobody says it's got to be five bucks. Nobody says it's got to be eight bucks. I mean, you can go higher if you want. There's no limit. So, yeah, you get to unlock all those bonus episodes. And again, there's a bonus episode every week. The masses, everybody, the free ones on Tuesday. And then Friday, it's just for you. And if you haven't noticed, I've been putting out these podcasts on Patreon when after I record them. Now, they, they do go to Beeman at the Less Desirables Network, and he puts them up there, so they'll show up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and all that good stuff. Then he also makes me a video so I can put it on YouTube. So, Patreon. If you get the app, it's free. You get the app, uh, you can hear any of them, except for the ones that uh, are locked. So, check it out, patreon.com slash Dog. There you go. Get hooked up. Get into the uh, dog's chair. That's the $4 level. Then the VIP, behind the bark VIP, that's the $8 level. But at least $4, they get you in. Yeah, you get all the audio. So anyway, I'm in a bit of pain today. Yeah, it's uh, gout. You know, here's the funny thing about gout. I didn't know anything about it. I used to think it was kind of a a weird disease, a weird thing that people had, because I got it confused with grout. Yeah, I was like, what? How how does this happen? Uh, You know, for the longest time, until finally, you know, as a teenager, I found out, oh, oh, that's what it is. The buildup of uric acid, gotcha, kind of like crystals in the joints kind of thing. Well, I've got the gout. And it hurts like a son of a gun, let me tell you. But the weird thing is, it's in a different place for me. Let's see, it's it's like the ball of my foot. You know, right there where the toes are. You know, from the sole between the toes, that little part where all the joints come together for for your uh, your toes. Well, that's where it's at. And it hurts. It hurts to walk around. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out where I, where it was coming from because you know there's things that can trigger it and then chigs reminded me of the big ass ham that we got last week i mean that thing was huge got it on sale on like food line it was like uh, i don't know 50 cents a pound or something like that bought one of those jokers and and you know it's like a big ass ham wrapped in tight plastic tight thick plastic and she uh, baked that joker up, and uh, it was delicious. I didn't think anything about it. Nothing about it. But then she finally nailed it this morning. She was like, it was probably that ham. And I was like, oh, yeah, God, I forgot about the ham. Yeah, because we ate on that thing for like two days. And so that's got to be where it came from. And there, the other triggers that I have, well, country ham is, is one of them. Uh, like one time Bate invited me and, and Jim over, um, I can't remember where Chiggs was. Maybe she was, she was out of town. And so I got invited over there with uh, my father-in-law for, we were having breakfast for dinner and he's cooked up some, uh, country ham and Lord, let me tell you two days after eating that country ham, my, my big toe was just swollen red. And my foot now is all swollen. It's it's hideous. My poor little toes look like uh, link sausages, and it looks like they're about ready to pop out of the skin. It's not not good. And you know, 
I only Snapchatted my feet because I honestly don't think that naked men feet should be seen in, in public, you know, other than where, you know, water's involved. I, I think men should really cover up their feet and that goes for, you know, flip flops, sandals, Ugh, sandals, you know, never, never, never worn sandals and never wore flip flops. Can't can't stand them but anyway i'm getting away from the subject but one of the other triggers is beef jerky for me see i'm 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 recording this podcast back where the magic happens back in the bedroom uh because it hurts to go down those stairs (laughs) to be quite honest with you there's so many stairs to go down but uh, you might be able to hear the traffic as it goes by and uh i just heard the dog sniff at the door to see if i was here beef jerky is a trigger. I love some beef jerky, but I can't eat it now. No, I can't ever eat it. And the the weird thing is, when I first got gout, uh, it was when I had a Bowman Gray Stadium racing show. If you don't know anything about Bowman Gray Stadium racing in Winston-Salem, I mean, it's right there at Winston-Salem State University. You can see the skyline of Winston-Salem from the racetrack. It's, it's within city limits and it is, uh, they've been racing there since like 1949 and it's a quarter mile track. It's a small little, little bull ring that circles a, a football field where Winston-Salem State plays their, their football games. I had a radio show on WSJS about the racing there, you know, giving people on a rundown of what happened the week before and give them a preview of what to expect that night. And we did it live. We started doing it at the stadium, doing it live there. And that became such a problem and nobody really wanted to work with me. And then when I made a request to do something, put in a phone line somewhere, uh, the race track promoters got upset at me because they're like, you know, they're going to kick that back to us and it's going to cost us money. And so I just said, look, it's, it's, Doing it live just didn't really go with the right thing that I wanted to do. Well, long story short, I I just uh, started doing it live from the radio station. Then I would make my way over there. And I would carry a small cooler with me because you can take coolers in there. You can't take alcohol. But you can take, you know, food to eat on. I would take some snack foods and I would take water. Because, you know, I would get, uh, try to keep hydrated while I'm out there. Also, it was a place to keep my notebooks and pens and extra pens. Because I would make notes during the race and, you know, do all that stuff. Sometimes I'd sit out in the crowd doing it. Sometimes I would sit up in the tower. That was really nice, especially on those hot summer nights. But what I would do, I took beef jerky with me to snack on. You know, to have some protein, have energy and everything. And then I got my first gout attack and I remember it hit my toe and, uh, my wife, she wasn't, we weren't married at the time, but uh, we were in bed and she got up to go use the bathroom and she put her hand, you know, she was using, it was in the dark. She was putting her hand on the bed to, to navigate her way around and she put her hand on my big toe. I woke up upright like, you know, like the undertaker, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I just pop right up top half of my body. I just pop right up and then shouted a expletive because it hurt, man, did it hurt? As a matter of fact, she did it overnight. She wasn't aware. You know, I, I don't blame her. It's just not good. So I'm sleeping. I turned over and then she kind of woke up and re- readjusted herself and she took her foot and hit my foot and I just let out an F-bomb. Just, ah! Oh, gosh. Man, did it hurt. That's when I knew I was in trouble. It was when she did that this morning. But I didn't realize the beef jerky was, you know, triggering these gout attacks. So here I am at the racetrack. I'm choking down all this beef jerky. You know, I'd go through like a bag of it a night. Maybe two. And I'd go through, you know, about six waters. Yeah, I'm talking like 12 ounce waters. I didn't realize the jerky was triggering it. So here I am walking around the racetrack, just hobbling around. And because I was in in pain, 
And what I would do is I'd go after the races, I'd go down into the pits and get interviews with the drivers, you know, try to stir up the drama because that's what the fans really want when they're at Bowman Gray Stadium. You've never seen it. Trust me, there's there's lots of crazy things that happen at Bowman Gray Stadium with the races, but I'm hobbling around the pits, going over to this uh, trailer, and oh, he's he's not here. He's he's still in the uh, you know the field house getting paid, and and I'm just like, oh great. So then I'd hobble somewhere else to get somebody to get an interview, and then I'd, I'd hobble somewhere else to get an interview. Oh, he's not here, and I'd have to come back. You know, that was gosh, that hurt. And, you know, I didn't realize that it was doing it. So then I finally realized it, knocked off the uh, beef jerky, and, hey, there you go. So it doesn't bother me as much now that I know the triggers. I don't know why I didn't think about the ham the other night. Oh, gosh. Because I was trying to start up walking again this week because I had some some issues last week with uh, my foot. Same foot, different part of the foot. So I want to get back to walking, and that's that's been derailed. Put on some vinyl, pour a glass of bourbon, nestle into that plush, deep pile carpet, and wait, get that crap out of here. We like to rock. Talking about music in a unique way. Listen to Beeswax Vinyl and more anywhere you find podcasts and at tldpodnetwork.com. We're more than just vinyl. And while I've um, taken some time off from the ACDC research, because to be quite honest with you, I haven't been all that crazy about listening to For Those About to Rock. Not one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's one of my least favorite ACDC albums. I mean, you got the title track For Those About to Rock. You know, We Salute You. I always thought that was kind of a stupid song. Great music, but just kind of stupid. You know, it's it's like cheerleading. Uh, I Put the Finger on You. I really like that song. Let's Get It Up. I Could Do Without. Inject the Venom is just... I don't know. I don't get it. Snowballed is okay. It's got a great riff in it. Evil Walks, never cared for it. COD, Care of the Devil. Good Lord. Not good. Breaking the Rules, didn't care for it. My worst song on there, Night of the Long Knives. Just don't care for it. Never did. And then Spellbound closes out the album. But I will say this, listening to it, again, I don't hate it as much as I thought I did. So I actually added some of those songs to other Spotify playlists, but I'm not going to bore you with the song by song details of this album. I will tell you this. The total running time for the album is 2,410 seconds. There is 1,411 crashes on that album. That comes out to a crash every 1.7 seconds. And that comes out to uh, 35.3 crashes per minute. That, by the way, if you've been paying attention, for those about to rock, is now number one with a 35.3 crash per minute, followed by Back in Black with a 33.3 crash per minute. See what I mean? He's, He's getting more crashy. And then number three, Highway to Hell. 25 crashes per minute. The interesting thing about this is they all were produced by Robert John Mutt Lang. So maybe Robert John told him, say, hey man, why don't you, uh, why don't you hit the symbols as much you possibly can? Just, just do it everywhere. Even if it doesn't make sense. So <laughs> I think that's what's going on, but I got to say that album kind of, kind of grew on me. Next up is, uh, Flick of the Switch. I like that album. I know a lot of people weren't crazy about it. You know, it didn't sell all that well. But I like that album because I bought it. Of all places, I found it on sale at Food Lion. Yeah, they had like a a, a bin of albums. And so it was on sale for like $5.99. So I had to get it. I was like, yeah, yeah. I've been putting off getting the album because I wasn't crazy about for those about to rock, but I was just like, yeah, five ninety nine. I can't pass that. Can't pass that up at all. So here I am at Food Line behind my mother, buying an ACDC album while she's getting groceries. Yeah. Anyway, if you want all of the findings, I am publishing them on 
wheelersdog.com. That is my award-winning blog. So, yeah, check that out. Also, give the Facebook page some love, Wheeler's Dog. Just look it up, like it if you haven't already, and feel free to like whatever you see popping up. If you haven't noticed, uh, CBS has done a lot of cancellations the other day. I'm waiting for the other networks to announce theirs. I'm still in the TV. I will always be in the TV. Network television, I don't watch too many shows anymore on network television. I think Supernatural was about all I really watch. I'm trying to think. Yeah, because I I got rid of all the DC shows that were on uh, the CW. They just, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, they put too much emphasis on love stories in these things. It just kind of gets on my nerves, grates on them. So I just, I just pulled the plug on all of them. Yeah, no more Legends of Tomorrow, no more Flash, no more, uh, well, I did finish Arrow, so yeah, there is that, and then there was something else I was watching on there, hmm, oh well, I can't remember, but I stopped watching all of those, I don't need them, you know? Conversations on the Rocks is the podcast where the guest determines the topic, and it's hosted by me, Kristen Dokas. Download the latest episode from your favorite podcast service, grab your favorite cocktail or other beverage, settle in, and let's get to know each other. Well, it looks like that, um, wow, this is really short. (laughs) I figured I'd be talking about the gout for a long time because God knows I will annoy the hell out of people talking about my gout. You know, get to work. Hey, you know, my gout's flaring up. Why are you limping like that? Well, it's my gout. My gout. Yes. Not a fun disease to have, let me tell you. And I've got nothing to do but just ride it out. Oh, it's such a pain. But anyway, I, yeah, the last podcast I was talking about shopping and shopping with a mask. Well, uh, I went to um, Sam's Club. What was it? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday being Wednesday. And uh, that's where I do like a supply run. That's where I buy our toilet paper. I buy like 45 rolls at a time. And I buy the K-Cups. They're a lot cheaper there. You can get a box of 100 of them a lot cheaper than, you know, at the grocery store. And, you know, it doesn't run out as often. And I will also get packaged meats. Uh, you know, like frozen stuff, like wings and stuff to put into the air fryer. But, uh, yeah, yesterday I was there and of course there's a line going out because in this state, North Carolina, you have to limit people by the square footage of the building. I went one day last week to see if I could go there and there were people around the side of the building, you know, where it makes sense. I get in there yesterday and the line is stretched out through the parking lot. You know, the side lot, it's it's over to the the trees where there's no land except where I-40 comes by. And people are stretched out straight across. And I, I let one car out and then as I start to pull in and people aren't aware that you're pulling in, they just kind of stand there, you know, scratching their butts. Then another car is trying to come out. So then they had a little bit of a louder vehicle. So people started moving out of the way. And uh, because I didn't want to be hitting my horn and get all nasty with people. You know, I just figured eventually they'll catch up. But, you know, they didn't until that car came along. And they didn't know if they could clear me. I was looking at this guy. He looked like he was, you know, 80 years old driving this thing i'm like good god good god it was like an old blazer or something and it's like please dude you got plenty of room you got plenty of room just just use the gas pedal and finally he got through and then i was able to park the car because there's always ample parking over there on the side you know what i mean if in the front of the store you know, people will stretch it all the way out. But if you go to the side, there's usually ample parking. So that's why I go over there. And I stood in line, which I thought would be forever. It only took nine minutes for me to get in. Mm-hmm. I snapped some pictures on Snapchat. And then one of them, I couldn't understand why they, unlike the other day or the other week, 
why people weren't wrapped around the building out of the parking lot way. You know, people, motorists coming through, they'd be out of the way. So then finally I got up there and I'm the last guy and he's like, hey, you can go in now. Just you, right? And I was like, yeah, just me. And and I said, you know, I realize it's not your job to, to herd people. But maybe you guys ought to think about putting like a little sign out there in the parking lot to tell folks to wrap around the building so people can use the side parking lot. They can come and go freely. You know, it's a crazy idea. <laughs> so the guy said, that is a good idea. So I don't know if they're going to do it, but yeah, I couldn't understand that. So I went in, uh, I had to pick up a few things like lint rollers. Believe it or not, that's in the office supplies. Found that out. Also picked up some of the fancy waters as Chigs likes to call it. That's the uh, seltzer kind of water. We like to drink that as a beer substitute because I got to lay off the beer. That really comes in handy. It gives me a, something in a can and it's kind of bubbly. So yeah, I drink that as a substitute. I got over to the meat section and to be honest with you, I didn't expect much. I've heard, you know, the shortage, Wendy's, like 20% of the Wendy's hamburger places, they don't even have hamburgers anymore because they, they don't have any fresh meat. And sure enough, there was no beef to be had. There were no steaks. There were no, you know, ground beef. The only thing that they had was this top dollar Angus beef, organic grass fed, whatever it is. I looked at that and I was like, no, 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 no. So I did go back over to the frozen food section. I just got a box of 40 frozen hamburgers. I said, screw it. I'm going to have a hamburger. I don't care what it is at this point. I'll have it. Fry that joker up. May put it in the air fryer. See how that does. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is they had the lights out in the butcher shop area. And there were people over there waiting. Like waiting for the butcher. And I'm just like looking like... Hey, what is your problem? Can you not see there's nobody here? There's nobody manning the place? Because I, I think they were out, you know, stocking different parts of the store. And the weird thing is, yeah, I pick up my 45 rolls of toilet paper there. I pick up 12 paper towels when I'm there. They had none of that. There's usually a whole wall devoted to those type of products. Now, the mill did say that we needed some uh, facial tissues. So I got some of those and uh, got 12 of them. There were only five of those left, 60 total. And I was like, good Lord, I couldn't believe it. I got a feeling that there's going to be a glut of toilet paper before too long. Kind of like gas, it gets real cheap. Maybe that'll happen. But anyway, I was just kind of blown away by that, the things that they didn't have. Also with the food, they didn't, they had a little bit of fresh seafood. They had a, a little bit of fresh pork products, but chicken and beef gone, gone, gone. And I'm a meat eater. I love the flesh of my fellow vertebrates. And uh, this is going to hurt if I can't get meat. I mean, I, I could very well die. I'll admit it. I'm worried. And the other thing that they were out of, Dawn dishwashing liquid. I got vinegar, but I need a Dawn dishwashing liquid to go along with my um, plant killing around the pool. You know what I mean? Weeds, stuff like that. Stuff you don't want growing between the bricks. Uh, it really does a great job. You mix that up with some salt. Man. And there's also this rose bush out by the pool pump I, I want to get rid of. Hate that damn rose bush. I wish somebody had never planted the damn thing. Hate it. And of course, there's some weird tree over there that my wife says, don't kill the tree. I'm like, look, it's there with the rose bush. It got in bed with this thing. It knows what the deal is. And I'm sorry. It's got to go. They were out of Dawn dishwashing liquid. They had some other green bacterial, but from what I understand, the Dawn blue is what you need. And the other thing that they were out of, couldn't understand. I saw them that they were out of it online, but they were out of my eye drops. The ones that I need for my dry eyes. Because not only do I have the gout, ever since I got over 50, everything, God, is going to 
going to hell. Going to hell. Everything. I got the gout flaring up. I got dry eyes. I mean, I was pulling like big old chunks of mucus out of my eyes. You know, the, the mucus lining that does your eye, they, they would like break loose and I'd have to pull that stuff out. And it was just, when I found out it was dry, I was, I was like, good God, good God. I don't know if years of wearing contact lenses did that, but it's not cool. It's not cool at all. And to be out of those things, I'm not happy about it. What am I going to do? What am I going to do to re-wet my eyes? I could go to, um, cause you get like three of them for like 18 bucks. But if you go to like even the, the Walmart friendly grocery store up here in, in Clemens, guess what? Those things are like for, for one bottle of it, it's like 10 bucks. And I just, man. And I don't really want to go back to Sam's Club because, yeah, even then, people don't know anything about social distancing. It's like, good Lord, people, come on. <sighs> you just you just want to smack somebody. <laughs> but I do love the uh, thing that everybody turned me on to Facebook is the Sam's Club app where I can scan, go, and pay, and then just show the, the guy at the front. And I'm out of there. It's great. I don't have to scan anything in, in line. I don't have to go through that whole process. It's all taken care of on the app. So, you know, apps are fun. And speaking of apps, get the Patreon app. You can listen to the podcast right there. All of them, except for the locked ones. And again, I'm going back to the bonus episodes that are going to be for patrons only starting May 15th. So be prepared. I just had somebody sign up the other day. You're not going to get billed until um, June 1st because they bill you the first of the month. You know, you just put that card in first of the month. So if you join now, you get the three bonus episodes that I've already recorded and you'll, you'll get all the ones that come out in May. What is that? I think it's three more that come out and those will be basically free for you because you're not going to get billed until June 1st. So patreon.com wheelers dog. And again, I appreciate everybody that has, has joined it. Uh, just got somebody signed up the other day. Guy I went to high school with likes the podcast. Uh, Jay, I do appreciate it. And the app, I use it for listening to the West Virginia surf report, even if it is on Spotify. All right, folks, I guess I'm going to tie it up again. Thanks to Tim Beeman over at the less desirables network, helping me out with all these things. And, you know, he's been helping me out with these extra episodes, these, what used to be bonus episodes every Friday. So yeah, those tend to come a little late because he's got a busy schedule on Fridays, but you know, they get out and thanks to him and, and doing the videos for them. Same thing with the, uh, bonus podcast. They will not be on YouTube. So Patreon only is the only place you can get them. And I do appreciate you listening and, uh, the beard ads, on the TLD network, they've got a fresh new podcast and got some kind words from Paul over there. He likes this podcast. So thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. And, um, well, that ties it up. I think I'm going to get out of here and maybe go, uh, watch some, uh, YouTube stuff. I got to catch up on better call Saul. Yeah. And Brock Meyer. Got to catch up. And then there's also some stuff I've been watching on uh, Amazon. By the way, if you've not seen this show on Amazon called um, Undone, it's kind of like a acted out, but then animated over the actors. Because uh, what's his name? Plays Saul Goodman. Oh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he's in it. And it's a very interesting show. It's a kind of science fiction, kind of kind of odd. And I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I think I've got maybe two more episodes on that and I'll be done there. Narco season two, the Mexico version. I've been watching it on Netflix. So maybe I'll do that. Got a full schedule. Then I'm going to be over to the Harper's tonight doing a little, uh, social distance drinking, that sort of thing. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Thank you. Because I honestly don't think that 
naked men feet should be seen in in public. 